It was like, it was my second day at Laurier when we were out at, I think it's the Rev now, on, on, is it Rev? Okay. Yeah. We were out at the Rev, and um, earlier that day, uh, we all had, you know, during the frost, you get the shirts, blue team, yellow team, you guys still do that, right? So we were blue, um, and, and we, no one can go by their real name. So my real name is Kaiser, okay? Kaiser Sullivan. And no one could go by their real name, so there's my, my little crew at the time, the blue team, were like, okay, everyone had nicknames, and um, they were like, okay, Kaiser, that's really your name. We're either going to go with Fraser or Razor. And at that moment in time, when I feel like I was a fork in the road, if I had picked Fraser and people would think of me as Kelsey Grammer, it would have been all horrible from that point. But that point, I was like, no, let's go with Razor, it's way better. We're going to go with Razor. Thinking it's going to be for Frost Week, it's great. You know, I'll be Razor this week. And uh, 12 years later, 14 years, or I don't know how many years later, it's still Razor and I love it. And today, I kind of look back, and that was really the point in my life where I sort of started to do what I wanted to do, follow my passion, and sort of Kaiser died a little bit and Razor sort of birthed, I guess. Um, later on that day, I'm at the Rev, and uh, I remember Stephanie, we were at the bar, and I didn't drink, but I really liked her, she was so cute, she's from my like, small town in Ontario, probably never seen a brown guy in her entire life. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, she buys me a Molson Dry, and I'm like, oh, cool, so I had a choice at that point, I'm like, hmm. Do I drink this Molson Dry and have my first taste of alcohol? Or do I tell Stephanie I don't drink and really that's in the sock? Um, so whatever, I cheers, I drink it. And for those of you whose first drink was ever Molson Dry, it is the worst possible drink you could ever have as your first drink. So I did it, sucked it back, and uh, started to be like, hey, you know what, that wasn't so bad. Let me keep doing things. And I, to me, Lori was all about discovery of the things that I love to do. And to this day, the things that I learned more outside of the classroom than inside the classroom still are a huge part of my life today and the company that we've created at I Love Rewards. So really that's my first couple of days um, at Laurier Frost Week was great. Went through biz school and um, I'm really going to fast forward to like my second year. It was in my second year, um, I started a company. Out of, I was in Bricker again my second year. I was president of Bricker, so I got to stay there. Um, and I started a company called Razor's Edge. In my first year, I was the floor rep. And one of our roles was to come up with like clothing that, you know, everyone wants to dress the same, right? In first year, that's cool. Everyone dressed the same. At least it was when I went to school. And one of my roles was to get us floor rep. And other than purple and gold, which again, back in the day was really expensive and not really student friendly and not all that cool, um, we went out and looked for options, and there wasn't really any great options. So, bought some stuff, we didn't love it, it wasn't great, it was really expensive, it took forever, and I'm like, you know, there's an opportunity here. So, I went home that summer, I did research, I saw, you know, where was all the cool things that I liked, you know, uh, plaid pants were really big back then, and hospital pants, and tearaways, and hoodies, and all that, polar fleece vests, and came up with a catalog of Razor's Edge um, <coughs> athletic apparel, and really tried to sell that into the university markets. It was, you know, clothing that students would like and stuff that they could afford, and I thought there'd be an opportunity for me to do that while I was in school. You know, didn't want to get a job at Wilfs, not that there's anything wrong with Wilfs, but I'd rather be being served than serving at Wilfs. Um, and wanted to make money while I was doing it, because that's what I love to do. I got to meet people, got to run my own little business out of my dorm room, and I did that, and I did that for three years, and it was great, and I loved doing it. And I graduated in 98. I graduated debt-free. All the money that I made doing that while in school, sort of paid for school all the way through. And um, I loved it. And I graduated, and I had a choice. You know, I could go and get a real job at KPMG or Procter & Gamble, or I could continue doing this. And I'm like, you know, I really like doing this. And again, followed my passion, and I started selling uh, corporate apparel to companies instead of students because I learned companies have way more money than students, and I'm like, follow the dollar, because I really love dollars too. And I started focusing on companies, and I started in my parents' basement, right, because they wanted to keep costs low, and, uh, but still wanted to um, grow my business. So I did that for a while, and uh, business was good. In 2001, a couple of years after I graduated, I wanted to grow the business, and the fastest way I thought we could grow the business was to merge with another company. So at the time, Razor's Edge and a company called Lunatex merged together and formed a company called Snap Promotions. 
So that was our new company. It doubled in size that year, doubled in employees. There's maybe like 10 of us. We were doing probably over you know, $2 million in sales, making 10% on the bottom line. It was great. That year was the first year we were in Profit Magazine as one of Canada's excuse me, fastest growing companies. We were number 69 on the list. Uh, I was the youngest CEO on the list, and I loved it. I'm like, this is great. You know, this whole, you know, do what you love, follow your passion and stuff, that's kind of working out for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. And um, unfortunately, the good times kind of came to an end in and around sort of 2002. And that's when I really learned the importance of goals and vision and values. See, what was important to me at the time was to continue to grow. I wanted to build a great company that would have a legacy and have a bunch of great people who loved doing what they did the way that I did it. But my partner at the time who owned half the business and had half the say, for them it was more of a lifestyle. You know, they were happy at where we were. They didn't want to overcomplicate things and grow. They made a good amount of money and they paid for the things that they wanted. And that's what he wanted. And what I learned quickly in life is that you need to really be careful of who you get into bed with, okay? Because depending on what their expectations are is really going to affect yours. And that applies for everything. Whether it's a one night stand, or you're starting rim up with the co-CEOs, as long as you understand the rules of the game and what you want out of this, it all applies. And I learned that we wanted different things, and that's ultimately what led to us breaking up the company at the time. So, 2003, uh, we pulled a shotgun, which is a mechanism in which you can buy your partner's shares and either sell your shares or buy their shares. So I ended up with 100% control of that company, which at the time was a little scary because it was just me. And a bunch of employees that are looking up to you and saying, okay, now what's, what do we do now? What's the game plan? And I've been kind of just living every day happy, whatever it is, and didn't really have the big master plan or the big picture or whatever it is. We knew that we'd be okay. Um, a year earlier, we had actually started a, another company called I Love Rewards, okay? I Love Rewards was really birthed out of a client of ours, ING Bank. ING Bank was buying all of their promotional gear from us, all of their logo goods for their call center employees. They don't make any money off of their fees if they're no fee bank account, but they make money when they call them and they, they upsell you a GIC, a mortgage, an RRSP, that's how they make money. They were giving their employees all ING gear, ING backpacks, ING jackets, ING hats, thinking that that would motivate ING call center employees to sell you more. But nobody really gets that motivated for an ING hat. You know, that was sort of the big thing <laughs> in the promotional products industry. We knew it, but our clients didn't really get buying this stuff. And they were like, yeah, this is not working. We like dealing with you, but the promotional products, they're not really working. We're wasting our money. What can we do about it? So what we did is we truly listened to our customers. We didn't want to lose them. They were our biggest customers at the time. And uh, we went in and we're like, listen, let's, let us talk to the employees that are in question here. Let's ask them what they want as rewards. And when we went there, we did lunch and learns, we did focus groups, and it came back that they wanted everything that we didn't sell. They wanted coach purses, they wanted Apple iPods, they wanted movie passes and gift cards. We had ING hats and ING sweatshirts, and nobody wanted that stuff. So we had a choice. You know, we could either evolve and grow and change, or we could sort of cease to exist as far as that client was concerned. So we chose survival. And um, from that, we built a web-based program that would allow employees to earn points for the behaviors the company wanted to motivate. Okay? So instead of spending $50 on a backpack, they could spend $50 in points. And um, accumulate those points and redeem them for whatever they wanted. You know, now the employees didn't have to get an extra large sweatshirt, and if you're, even if you're a 110 pound girl and you'd be swimming in it, you can now pick whatever you wanted. And that gave their employees the power to choose their own reward and motivate themselves to achieve what they wanted to achieve. And from that moment onward, you know, ING sales started to increase, our revenue with them started to increase, employee retention started to increase. We went from a $50,000 account to a quarter million dollar account in one year because of our little program. And we were like, this is the greatest thing ever. We're like high-fiving ourselves. We we're so smart. And um, it was actually later on that night, a year later, when we had all the stats, that we're sitting there and um, you know, we, we were at our board of advisors, board of directors meeting, 